it's we working. We are coming to you live from Newegg Studios in Southern California. <laughs> this is Newegg Now. <laughs> uh, she's Trisha Hirschberger. Yes, fact. And I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell. Just a little <laughs> shaky start there. We're refining our, our sea legs here. A couple of studio changes. You don't need to know about that. It's all good. We're professionals. So we're here every Thursday at 10 a.m., which yep. is exactly where you should be every Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific. And uh, we're going to talk about hardware. Uh -huh. We play games. We're going to be playing some games today. We are. I'm really excited about some that, actually. Really we're playing City of Brass by Uppercut Games. It's going to be a good time. Uh, this is going to be a good challenge, I feel. And uh, this is also where we share deals that are so good that they will not be around tomorrow. While supplies last until midnight tonight, whichever comes first, that's just how New Egg now rolls. That's right. So we've got a really fun show today, all about streaming media and going yeah. wireless. But before we do anything else, let's go to that New Egg Now page and show you exactly how things work. Uh, yeah. So Juan, I think you have it open on your laptop, right? Yeah, I do. I've got it. Uh, we can we can throw it on my computer now. I, I, I minimized that other browser that I had open. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so we've got We're very professional today. newegg.com <laughs> slash newegg now, where you want to be every week, uh, every week on Thursday. If you're right there now watching along with the show, this is probably going to get a little meta. I know. Are we going to be, are they watching us watching ourselves? Is no, I actually did. Today? I did manage to jump in and, and pause it so that thankfully it's not going to okay. really broadcast what's going on there. So. Okay. Um, so, uh, <laughs> thanks for watching. Yeah. Um, so, um, so, yeah, look at all these deals. Yeah, beautiful deals, wireless keyboards and mice, tons of PC components, mm -hmm. monitors, Bluetooth speakers, some really cool looking PlayStation 4 and Xbox controllers. I'll scroll down for that. Um, those are some really pretty Xbox controllers, and we do have a, a really nice PlayStation 4 there. Mm -hmm. uh, so we check out all the different colors. Uh, console preferences aside, I, just by going on looks, all right, scroll gonna, up and I'm down that page one. again. Which, which, which ones are you feeling? Oh, that's interesting. The Combat Tech Special Edition Military Green. Looks looks pretty clean. That's I, not something I've seen before. I'm personally, uh, I'm, I'm leaning towards Ocean Shadow. But you're, correct me if I'm wrong, you're normally a PlayStation guy, right? Well, I have a PS4 at home, but yeah. I do most of my controller you're, gaming on a PC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Xbox controller. There you go. FCW. That's, there you that's go. how we roll. Yeah, um, um, and I just like blue, you know, like phones in blue and gadgets in blue. I feel like your next build is going to be all blue. That's my prediction. It's either blue or green. I haven't quite made up my mind okay. yet, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Okay. Well, everyone at home, all of these controllers are fifteen dollars off the normal price when you use the promo code that you'll find mm -hmm. right there on that New Egg Now page. Yeah, good times. So uh, this is true. Uh, controllers, <laughs> they don't really go on sale that often. Not like. Yeah. Like real good like price cuts. So when they do, what's hilarious is Stuck that up. yeah, when when controllers have gone up, we've we've put them on sale before. Those are some of the things that that sell out the fastest. Well, so. because I feel like more controllers is always better, especially <laughs> if like you use one for your PC and others with your actual console. That way, I mean, for me, my uh, my PC gaming room is upstairs, and I keep my Xbox One down in the living room. And rather than have to run all the way downstairs every time right. I want a controller for a game, we're, we're it's so much that. nicer to just keep I, one. I don't. I don't. There I don't need PC. those steps on my fitness tracker. I'm. I'm good. I'm not gonna make that extra. But. We probably all need it to be honest. We just <laughs> right. don't want. Well, not not right. when we cover some more VR though. That's there what's gonna go. be exciting. Perfect. It's just like I, I'll make it up with Sprint Vector. So on that new egg now page, you'll also find a fantastic deal on the Motorola Pulse Escape Bluetooth wireless headphones. Mm -hmm. We're all about breaking free from wires today. All the wires. All of them. And okay. these headphones are a great way to do just that. This headset features uh, touch controls on mm -hmm. the ear cups, up to six hours of playtime on a charge, and it has a built-in microphone, so it, it's, it works for making calls, mm -hmm. making phone calls. It's lightweight, foldable, easy for travel, noise isolation features, and 40-millimeter uh, drivers. So nice. it's a quality, versatile Bluetooth headset. Now, normally the Pulse Escape's gonna cost you about 50 bucks, but if you act fast and take advantage of our new Now discount, you can get it for just $19.99. That's a good deal. Not bad. Right. Right? That's a good one. Um, for VR enthusiasts out there or just people looking for a futuristic way to enjoy their media, we also have a deal on this super cool Avagant Glyph, which uh, you may remember it was Ooh. all the hot buzz a few years ago uh, at E3 and CES. Um, and we've got it right here. So uh, Juan is modeling it for everyone. Now it's funny because I just tweeted out a picture of this before we went live and everyone's like, Oh man, that headset looks uncomfortable because I think people didn't realize that the uh, where you put your eyeballs does not go on your head. Yes, that would be uncomfortable if you wore it like a traditional headset, but that's not what it's for. So uh, it's got a display built in 
and these lovely little things that I like to call eye holes. That's not really what they're called. Um, <laughs> it's a technical term. <laughs> right. Uh, you'll, you'll catch up. Don't worry. We'll, Avagon we'll calls the Glyph a, um, a portable private cinema. And what you're getting really is a high quality visual and audio experience that connects to almost any smartphone or yeah. tablet to allow you to watch and listen to your media without staring down at a tiny screen. So it also works with drones, funny enough, for that first person flying perspective. Yeah, good times. Uh, if you want to put your arms out like this and just pretend Superman. you're Superman. Um, this is a great media solution for travelers, though, like since it provides a private way for you to watch movies on, say, a crowded plane. Um, that's a really, really fun solution as opposed to a tiny screen. So the Avagon Glyph has 2D, 3D, and 360 degree panorama modes, and it's available with the promo code on Newegg now for just $189.99 while supplies last. So I, I really wanted to do the whole show. Like, just wear it? Like actually watch watch us doing the show. You know, like I could watch us doing, and like I could have yeah. my Jordi LaForge thing. Yeah, it's very know? futuristic. It I is, it's, it, and, and also I just like the idea of it being like, it, it looks like it could just be normal headphones. Yeah. But no. But no. But no. Right. All right. So um, we're, we're going to shift. Here, I'll move this off. Uh, shift we'll gears here. We're going to switch up. Uh, let's jump in. Let's talk yeah. about the growing trend of ditching cable in favor of living the pure streaming lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually have the data right here in front of us. Um, but let's ask the audience if you're watching at home, if you're watching at work. Eh, uh, what percentage of American households do you think still pay for cable? Oh man, shout out your guesses in the comments, guys. What do you think? You have to imagine the Final Jeopardy song playing yeah. right now. Um, Juan, do you have any guesses? Or did you already look at the? I already read the script. Okay. Yeah. So uh. I, I was. I, so I already read the script. I was. I, I was about fifteen percent off. Okay. I was I was fifteen percent wrong in favor of streaming technologies. Okay, well I wanna I wanna know what it is. What is it? So I uh, I mean if you're ready for the answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, based on data from the Lightman Research Group in 2010, 88 percent of American households paid for cable or satellite TV. But in, in 2010. In 2010. Now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is uh, eight years ago. But in 2017, as of last year, that number had fallen to 79%. That's still so much higher than I thought it was That is way higher than what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Now, with that being said, we wanted to get a sense of where the new egg audience right. is as far as going cable free, because they're probably savvier than the average bear. So we put out a poll on Twitter yeah. asking people if they still have a cable TV package or not. Yeah, and, and you've got the results on your laptop if you want to pull them up. I'm going to try. Yeah, oh, see if you can find it. There I've, we I've go. got them if we want to throw it to the uh, throw to my computer. Okay. So, so this was much more in keeping with what I thought. Again, I'm yeah. living in my, you know, coastal elite tech bubble. Um, we're, we're looking at right here, 60% of, uh, of Newegg responders had cut the have cord. Have cut the cord. Have so cut the cord. So not currently have cable. Yes, that's much more in line with what I was thinking. So uh, so the, the numbers here, 60% of the Newegg audience, yes. 28% still rocking some kind of cable pack, cable TV package. 12% planning on cutting the cord relatively to. soon. planning to. Now, Juan, where do you fall in oh, this? What oh, would you have answered? We, we gutted it. I voted yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we, we moved on. Never looked back. Yeah. We, we only I, pay for the internet. I would be in the 12% planning to, mm -hmm. only because I have been trapped into a yeah. contract <laughs> that I cannot get out of. No joke. For years. Oh. Years I've been trapped into a contract. Um, but I'm very happy to so say I'm that it's up in about up two months. Uh, so in about two months, I will be cable free. And I'm really excited about that because I don't really watch cable anymore, no. ever. I think so many of us are on demand watchers, you know? Well, yeah. And, and again, it's moving mm -hmm. services. So we, we, we do have a TV package, the YouTube TV package. Okay. But it's the same thing. It's like... It's a cloud DVR. I want to watch stuff when I want to watch it, where I want to watch it, right. on what device I want to watch it, not right. even necessarily my TV. And we don't, I, I wouldn't even be able to tell you what channels or times, like my favorite shows, actually broadcast. I was thinking about that on the drive to the studio this morning because I'm like, oh man, we got like two months left and then we're going to cut. Um, so the shows that I do watch, I like Riverdale, I like Flash. And I'm like, you know, I have to figure out what, how to still get those, whether it's Hulu or whatnot, but, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a good, I think it's gonna suit you. I think you're gonna do well oh. with the... Uh... Nine times out of 10, I fire up uh, HBO Go or Netflix. Yeah. Nine times out of 10, maybe even more than that. Probably. Yep. 
yep. it works yep. out that way. So if uh, if you're out there uh, watching and you have something to say about the uh, the way you watch TV, let us know in the comments. Uh, we'll be checking in on the discussion on YouTube and Facebook throughout the show. Or if you have a tip or advice from your own life, how you got into your own cord cutting, how you what you uh, do for your own entertainment setup, let us know, and we'll try and feature some of those comments later in the show. Yeah, help me, give me some good ideas before I venture into that territory. Because it's good times. Um, yeah, right. Um, so cords are the bane of every tech enthusiast's existence. Always in the way, yeah. never the right cord when you need it. It's a nightmare, frankly. Um, it's something that we deal with every day here in the studio because you can imagine how many cables this kind of operation requires. It's a daily. Has this ever happened to you? Right. Uh, lucky for you, this episode is all about getting rid of those pesky cables and cords and getting closer to that cord-free lifestyle that we are all after. Okay, so the first step to cutting the cord, figuring out exactly what you want want to be wireless. Yeah. And I think the first step for a lot of folks is the Wi-Fi's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, we probably all have some kind of Wi-Fi solution by now, even if it's supplied by your ISP or mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. So that's a critical part of a personal wireless media empire. Almost everything we're about to discuss probably requires you to have a good, stable Wi-Fi connection, so yes. you make sure you have the right router for the job. And having the right router for the job, we've got one. Oh, funny enough, we've got one right just, here. It just so happens, you know, again, what a fun coincidence. Yes. Uh, you can check out the Newegg Now Deals page, and you can uh, you can look up the Asus OnHub AC1900 router, which comes with a NAT firewall for $27 off. Great. Speeds up to 1900 megabit per second, and its own dedicated CPU. So Great. this router should have you covered, literally. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about movies and TV. Leaving cable and satellite TV. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, I'm going to close. I, I don't know what that's going to mean for stuff that's running on the laptop. We'll figure it out. Okay. Is that fan? Okay. Yeah, the fan's pretty aggressive. Okay, well, we've got that out of the way now. We're doing uh, it live. We're doing it live. <laughs> um, so hopefully you can hear us a little bit better. Thank you for your patience. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about movies and television. Leaving cable and satellite TV subscriptions behind is more popular than ever, as we just discussed. Yeah. If you're just looking for simple broadcast TV, a digital antenna is a really easy solution. Mm -hmm. You can get a good HD antenna for less than $40, and anything you can watch with that is free. Although, of course, it will have commercials. Um, but we're all pretty much at the point where we want to watch what we want to watch when we want to watch it. Broadcast TV is not really great for that, and neither is expensive cable. So um, it looks like from the results of the poll that a lot of you guys agree with that. Yeah, and that's and that's why we've been talking mm -hmm. about streaming services, Netflix, Hulu, mm -hmm. um, HBO, yep. uh, Showtime plugins, YouTube TV. It's why these have become so popular. It, it's it's really awesome to see that whatever you it, you know whatever you want to watch on your schedule. Mm -hmm. it, you know, we went through that whole thing like TiVo brought in the days of time shifting, and now we have like yeah. everything shifting. You know, content doesn't really have to live on any one particular device. No, uh, and one solution, of course, is to get a smart TV. Many modern televisions come with a bunch of services built in, like Netflix, Hulu, and YouTube Accessible directly from your TV. In fact, it's hard to find a TV that does not yeah. have smart functionality. So th those are really nice because you can just log in with your account, and then you're getting all of your favorite video content directly from your television without having to hook up anything else. Yeah, although, because we're going to talk about some other accessories. Yes. So even with the Samsung TV that I sold myself mm -hmm. on this show, I, I still have a Chromecast plugged into it because sure. there are some things that just seem to work a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, you know, between the TV version of the app and the phone version of the mm -hmm. app, I digress. We'll cover that in just a bit. Um, I always have both hooked up in case one's being a little wonky. finicky and then I got to go to the so, other one. So, yeah, you, you, watching the Super Bowl or mm. the, the Superb Owl, um, okay. can we even say that? Uh, I think I, I just, know. I don't know. Um, the, uh, the the broadcast got a little wonky on the TV version of the app, and I just went boop, boop, and then flicked it over great. to the Chromecast version of the app, and it worked great. Perfect. Um, but if you don't have a smart TV, exactly what we're talking about, there are a million different ways that you can stream your favorite video services. Yeah. If you happen to own a gaming console, uh, you probably already have what you need. So in addition to playing games, all the modern consoles, except the Switch for some reason, for some reason. stream all of those popular services. Totally. Mm -hmm. So uh, the streaming market is full of a huge variety of set-top boxes, streaming sticks, uh, mm -hmm. all made for this, this exact purpose. Roku was one of the first to get into this market. It's still an excellent option, uh, but pretty much all the big players now, Apple, 
Google, Amazon, yep. um, and, and a number of other third-party uh, manufacturers have things that you can use to do this. Right. I mean, it's hard to give a precise recommendation because everyone's needs are different. Mm -hmm. So you'll want to do a little research to find the best options for your price range. So like if you want to do 4K streaming, the Google Chromecast Ultra is a very small, um, and, and again, it, it, it's not even so much that it's intuitive, it's just that it's on your, it works off your phone. It's so easy. If you know how to use yeah. the app on your phone, you just flick it up to your TV and it works right. really, really, really well. Um, but if you're just streaming uh, standard content, then a Fire TV might be the right fit for you, uh, depending on what it is that you like to watch. Yeah, the other obvious solution, I think, is simply to plug a computer into your TV and hook up a wireless keyboard and mouse. Now, a lot of people don't like that idea because they're imagining bulky towers with a tangle of wires, but it really doesn't have to be like that. Oh, no. You can get tiny gaming machines that are smaller than consoles, like Intel's Hades Canyon Nook that oh, we yes. talked about a few weeks ago. <laughs> Pair that little powerhouse up with a wireless keyboard, a mouse, or a wireless controller, and you have yourself a media machine that can do just about anything with no more wires than a gaming console. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and if you don't want a full tower set up, another option is a gaming laptop. You could keep it near your TV when you want to use it, but it also gives you the option to do some portable gaming whenever you want that. Yeah, uh, maybe just check out how loud the fans are. <laughs> so if you need a gaming laptop, uh, we have the very excellent Acer Predator 15 15.6 inch screen, i7 7700HQ uh, CPU, GTX 1060 uh, GPU gaming laptop. It's on sale right now, $100 off, which is a pretty killer deal. Mm -hmm. You won't want to miss out on that one, so make sure you check out that new Egg Now deals page. So streaming video is great, but there's one issue. Even if you have a few different subscriptions, there's one area in which all the streaming services are lacking, and that's sports. This mm -hmm. is why I'm still tied into a cable package at this very moment. If you're a fan of more traditional sports like hockey and baseball, as opposed to, say, Overwatch and Counter-Strike, <laughs> then it can be challenging to keep up without a cable subscription. Definitely. So an yeah. HD antenna can keep you covered for most local games, mm -hmm. unless your favorite local sports team signed a really obnoxious deal with the local cable provider to lock that stuff up onto a higher tier of cable. I'm cranky about that. Um, but if you want to access all the games of your team, you might have to pony up the dough for an individual subscription to the NFL, NHL, NBA, whatever your jam is. Uh, these are usually a little more expensive than your typical streaming service, but for some people, I mean, especially if you're a fan, that's yeah. totally worth it. And I wouldn't discount how some of those other just regular sports channels, how an ESPN might tie into a Roku or, uh, right. or another service like YouTube TV. Right. And of course, we can't talk about wireless media without talking about Plex and other server-based media services. Plex is a beautifully optimized media service. So first of all, it's free, and that's a huge plus. <laughs> Just download and install it, and Plex will efficiently label and organize all of your media. So everything from music to movies and allow you to stream it to all of your devices. Oh, it's super yeah. handy too, because I run it off of my NAS. Okay. So yeah, I don't even have to have a computer running. It's just a natural part of the box O hard drives that's under my desk. And mm -hmm. you can also set it up to do some really cool things too, like photo sharing. Mm. So as soon as I'm on Wi-Fi, it's Plex right. backs up all of the photos on my phone. Awesome. It's so clean. So if you're someone who has a large collection of media, Plex is, is great. I, I, I love running a Plex server. So there are paid versions, allow you to record mm -hmm. TV for free over the air, sync your media offline, uh, parental controls, that could be a really big deal for some folks out there. And, and just just a bunch of other just nice little handy features. Uh, that premium subscription is five bucks a month, Not bad. forty dollars a year, mm -hmm. or I mean, if you're digging it, just do the hundred and twenty dollars for the lifetime Have subscription. You done that yet? I'm running the free one. Okay, great. The free one has been has been great. Uh, it's it's already amazing. So I, I haven't actually had the need yet. Right. Maybe as Lex gets a little bit older. You might want those parental controls. I want might want to okay. put some locks on something, and I think then that would make sense for me to to start shopping up the tier. Very cool. Well, um, as you guys can see, there are a ton of options for wireless media, but how about gaming? Um, if you're trying to cut your gaming cord, there are definitely options as well. First of all, Steam, Steam is, your is your friend. friend. <laughs> Not just because they have excellent <laughs> sales all the time, and I spend way too much money, um, but because they also have some really great wireless solutions involving streaming, depending on your home setup. Yeah, they, they just had the entire Oddworld collection. And you're like, well, I need it. Well, I don't know when I'm going to get to play it. That's what I always do. I'm like, well, it's 80% off, so I'm just going to have to buy it. Well, they got it. me, too. It's like Abe's Odyssey's free. Okay. Okay. But I need all the rest of them, too. Right.
OK, sorry. Uh, <laughs> you may have noticed if you log into your Steam account from a different computer than where mm -hmm. your game is installed, but it's still on the same network as your main PC, there's an option to stream it instead of installing it again, mm -hmm. Trey Smart. So this is Steam in home streaming, and it allows you to stream from your primary machine, which means you can play your favorite games on even an underpowered laptop. Right. Log into your Steam account, verify your account, click on the game as though you were going to launch it, and you should see the option to stream it. And if you want to stream to a television, check out the Steam link. It's a little box that allows you to do the same thing, but on a TV using the Steam controller. And with these options, you can have a wireless setup that's streaming from your powerful rig in another room, which means all of the advantages of beefy components, but with none of the clutter or wires. If you're looking for a gaming PC experience in your living room, this could very well be the way to go. Yeah, so speaking of Steam Link, uh, Valve uh, just announced a new app that will allow you to stream your Steam games to your Phone. Yeah. So that's awesome. And it's also called Steam Link, though it's software, not, not a box or plug-in or a stick or anything It's a little like weird that. IMO. Um, it'll allow you to play your full library of Steam games using a Steam controller and other peripherals, um, but on a tiny device. And that will, of course, <laughs> require a pretty hefty signal. You'll need a 5 gigahertz network or Ethernet wiring for it to work. Real interesting move. Um, so I want to know at home, would you guys use Steam Link? And are there any Steam games you would want to play on your phone? Uh, like all Thoughts? of them. Yeah. Really? I'm, I'm, I'm on board. I like this idea. Again, I, I like <sighs> this, this, this push that we're making for the phone being sort of a brain with other devices connected to it. Yeah. And I'm actually doing a challenge with, uh, with another YouTuber soon to like who can make the best Android powered desktop out of their phone. Okay. So like you can plug in all this stuff and really can you get your work done? Can you really get everything set up? And okay. gaming is going to be a part of that. You know, so I mean, it's not just whether or not we get good Android games. Because we, I think we're watching developers and uh, other hardware manufacturers meet in the middle. So developers are putting out like PUBG and Fortnite for mobile. Yeah. But then we're also looking at how can we get that game just running from a more powerful device and just pop it up on a smaller screen. I like the novelty of it from a tech standpoint, but I don't know how often I would prefer to game on a phone as opposed to. Say my laptop, you know what I mean? Totally. Or a portable gaming device like the Switch. So I don't know. I mean, options are great for us, the consumer, and that's cool. And, yeah, it's an interesting move. And, I, you know, it, it is still, I think, novelty when it's stuck on a really beefy home network. Right. When we can get some kind of solution where you could take that out. Like, you've got your morning commute. On and an you still airplane. Wanna... You still want to keep gaming on a, on a train on a slower uh, yes. on a slower Agreed. internet connection? Then I think we've pressed mm. it into something really special. Cool. Um, and they're not the only ones making this play. I, a number of other mm -hmm. companies are trying to figure out solutions for this. Nvidia has been a big name in this space too. I mean, taking it back to, did you ever play the Shield controller <laughs> yes. like setup and the Shield tablets? Yeah. Um, so a GeForce Now, which, which allows you. Which I saw you, at CES. Very cool demo. Again, it's another uh, another system allows you to stream games straight from the cloud on a variety mm -hmm. of different hardware configurations for a monthly fee. Yep. So this could be an interesting option, uh, be more economical if you have faster internet, but a machine that doesn't necessarily have all the guts to play high-end AAA titles. Yeah, that that's a really interesting move, yeah. specifically for people who maybe have a lower-end PC or who want to play games that are not traditionally Mac compatible on a Mac, oh, totally. and lots of different things. Um, so that's the key if you're going to stream games is internet speed. Yeah. You have to have a seriously fast connection if you're going to avoid input latency and quality reduction. So uh, if, if you don't have fast internet or internets at all, which I, if you don't, I don't know how you're watching this, but well done. <laughs> uh, there's, there's, there is another cord that we need to consider cutting, and that is HDMI. Okay, let's we, talk about wireless HDMI. We can. We can do just that right now. Uh, so most gaming and media machines still use HDMI as the primary output, and there's a growing number of wireless HDMI options, which means that you can have your computer on one side of the room hooked into a wireless transmitter, and the receiver on the other side can pick up the signal and output it to your TV or display. The technology is still new, but the results are already pretty 
cool. Yeah, so you can even pull bad. off 4K transmission. Yeah, some really interesting work being done here. Mm -hmm. I, obviously, like the downside of wireless HDMI is this is this is fresh territory. So right. a lot of this stuff is a bit finicky, uh, and there are competing standards. Again, whenever something's new, you've got a couple companies that are trying to get that toehold on this is going to be the standard, right. and you end up kind of fighting each other for a while. Mm -hmm. And some some have physical space issues too. So many of these devices for the highest possible quality will require a line of sight, um, which might cause problems for some people depending on your layout. Like that mm -hmm. won't work in my two-story condo. Right. You know, I, I can't make that happen. But if you have the right setup and you've got the right room, you've got the right space, it is an option to consider when you're looking to ditch wires. And if you're looking for this nifty wireless solution that Juan and I are discussing, then we've got you covered. Action Tech has a variety of wireless HDMI transmitters, and we have three of them on sale right now through Newegg Now. First, we have the ScreenBeam Mini 2 wireless display receiver. Now, this little flash drive sized guy allows you to connect your device wirelessly to a display with a peer-to-peer -peer connection. It's perfect if you're, say, on the road and want to turn your hotel television into a full-size monitor for your laptop or mobile device. This is a low-priced wireless solution, and right now you can get it for $10 off. And if you're looking for a higher level HDMI mm -hmm. uh, transmitter, we also have the My Wireless TV Multi-Room Wireless HD Video Kit that allows you to transmit a video signal via HDMI wirelessly. Uh, this transmitter and base come with everything you need to get your wireless HDMI setup up and running, and you can pick it up right now for 25% off. And then lastly from Action Tech, we have the Action Tech My Wireless TV 3 4K connection kit, which as you probably figured out from the name, is a wireless <laughs> transmitter and base that's capable of 4K video. It's pretty tricky. <laughs> Very cool if you're into streaming super high resolution video. You can pick up that package for $50 off right now. So there you go. There are a ton of <laughs> options for people who hate wires as much as we do. Uh, between streaming services, wireless adapters, it's pretty amazing how many many wires you can get rid of, how many cables you can cut. Um, and even looking at wireless power, like your new phone, mm -hmm. I mean, there there is a cable going to the charger, but if we could get sure. some kind of wireless power thing, some sort of Wi-Fi fog of battery charging, and we could cut down even more on what we need to plug in at home. Yeah. So that about does it for what we have to say about all of this. I'm going to check in on the comments on YouTube and Facebook and see what our viewers out there think about going cable free or whether it's worth keeping the cord. So uh, while she does that, I'm going to talk about viewer submissions. A uh, big part of what we do on Newegg now is celebrate Newegg's wonderful customers and fans. I'm going to try and open this and see what happens. Oh boy! Um, okay, so let's see. We were asking people, if you cut the cord, let us know what your entertainment setup is like and where you currently get your content. And I see um, King Ben, at C King Ben on Twitter, says, haven't watched TV since around 2010. Leech off my sister's Netflix account, but never use it. Um, use YouTube pretty often, too. So Netflix and YouTube, for sure. Mad Colt Media, at Mad Colt oh, this Media, is a good list. says, yeah. Netflix, Sling, Sling, Prime, Antenna, YouTube streamed on Roku, Chromecast, and Android TV. Hashtag cut the cord. Cut that cord. Indeed. Um, I see people here with uh, the developer who is nameless at the real, <laughs> the real Grim Dev. Says Netflix, Hulu Prime, yeah, CBS all on a DLP TV circa 2007 and an audio system I pieced together around 2001. Take it. That's the cool, cool thing too is like being able to plug into stuff that you've already established for a good home theater. Yeah, you know, like I know smart speakers or some really cool stuff coming out, new sound bars. Mm -hmm. But like if you already had a really nice audio setup, it, it's it's nice having parts that can just plug into that as opposed to having to rebuy speakers and audio kit and receivers and stuff. Yeah, I see a couple people here using Plex. Mm -hmm. Very, very cool. Oh, someone putting the plug out for Cody. That's uh, yeah. Josh Galena. Oh, okay. Right. okay. We, cool, we, we might have to talk, like, dig in deeper on Cody in a future future episode because there's also just the little uh, media company controversy around Cody, too. Uh, Josh Blackburn giving some love to Twitch as well. Love watching Twitch. 
um, at, but also have the HD bunny ears for football and local news, <laughs> like we were talking about with it. sports. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I do have this up and running if we want to throw to my laptop. Uh, Ooh, to see some builds. See some builds. And uh, this is from Ada665. And Ada wants to know what we like better, if we like the white build. Oh, hi, Groot. A little Groot there. Or do we like the red build? Like the red color scheme, I mean. I'm she's... partial to the white. You like it? You like the white? I think I like. It the looks white super too. clean. That that looks really pretty. I like that. Yeah, one. I like that a lot. Um, I I it it made me kind of nervous. Like why? saying like why do you have like the action figure on your graphics card? But like, <laughs> it's probably fine. It's probably great. But yeah, it's it's a nice touch. I think that's a really cool little decor decorative element to put on inside. Uh, this is from William Chase. Again, another another challenge for us. He's calling this the mm. arc or dark. Arc or dark. So like the the Iron Man arc reactor. Okay. You know, so if we want that, that sort of like Iron Man glow, or do we want to make it dark and edgy? Uh, so I, again, I, I tend to lean towards white. I, especially the way that his water cooler yeah. lights up on the white build, I think I like that one better too. I would say, I would say go arc. I think it might be that I have spent years and years and years looking at black and red gaming peripherals and PC builds and setups in general, kind of black and red or black and green or like yeah. their two options. But I really like seeing the white When there are new fresh colors yeah, and just stuff. it's novel still to me. Well, and um, even down to like motherboards and stuff where we're mm -hmm. seeing like white trim so that it reflects light better. It's some really cool stuff. Yeah. And this is from at Black Box. Uh, <laughs> working at it when I can see how far I can stretch. $900. This is an R5 1600 <laughs> B350 Tomahawk team with eight gigabytes of RAM. Uh, let's pull this up. And, and I like that he even in, in incorporated the lens flare. Yeah. So you can, you can go J.J. Abrams with, on your, your with your build too. But yeah, again, I, like these new fan layouts and the new lighting on fans look super, super clean. I like that a lot, especially down to even the little, uh, every time I roll over the photo, the tweet blocks it, but the little diagnostic window mm -hmm. down at the bottom of the case for the shroud, I think that looks really sharp. It does look really I sharp. I think that's really cool. And again, I like that a lot. A triple fan in the front. These these cases are just looking so hot right now. Right. I'm right. liking this a lot. And they make it so easy to make it so beautiful. I really got to rebuild. Right. Got to do that. That's the problem with doing this show is all of the time you're like, I, I just need <laughs> oh, this new I component. I need to, I need to rebuild. I need to up my game. It's a problem. Uh, but seriously, uh, thank you all at home for sending in your build, sending in your comments, participating in this discussion. Definitely. And making Juan and I constantly feel <laughs> like we need to do better just, and rebuild our home setups. Just I appreciate you. Just drooling. <laughs> so uh, if you out there want to be a part of a future episode of Newegg Now, send your photos mm -hmm. to us on the Twitters at Newegg and use that hashtag Newegg Now. And we're, we definitely want to be featuring your stuff in, uh, in future episodes of the show. Okay, so keeping with the wireless theme, let's talk about wireless ways to control your games. True. Once upon a time in the distant past, game controllers always had wires. Big chunky cords physically attaching you to your Nintendo or Genesis. Ah, oh, remember those days, Yeah, one? good old days. You got your first, so like, good. arcade joystick, and it had the big cable, and you had to sit, like, Love three it. feet in front of your Nintendo. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I remember sitting literally three feet from my television at home as a little kid, like, pretzel sitting cross-legged <laughs> with my controller. Like, whether it's, do you remember the Nintendo uh, Turbo controller? Oh, that yeah. was, like, the joystick with the big buttons. Oh, yeah. All that kind of stuff. It's like so we get into so many arguments with friends because like it, you like it was one of those accessories you, like you only had one. Yeah. So you, oh, you, yeah. you would have the turbo stick and your you friend would get like and the controller. And who gets the regular and, like, controller and not balanced at all then like not, not even a question. Not even close. Yeah. Not oh even those are good days. And then like your parents would be like <laughs> you need to sit farther away from the TV or you're going to go yeah. blind. And I'd be like I can't. I can't. The cord. It's That's as far as it, I wish I could. Right. I, but I can't. And it led to me for a long time feeling more comfortable sitting on the ground gaming because that's what I was used to. Um, but that's not the case anymore. These days, <laughs> wireless controllers for consoles are the expected standard. Yes. But on PC, wired peripherals are still more common. So I think part of the reason for that wires have lasted so long with PC peripherals is mm -hmm. that with a PC, you don't feel restricted by cords in the same way you do with a console, like you were saying. Like, well, because in a traditional PC setup, you've got all of your controls at right your there. desk. You're sitting there anyway. You're not across the room. You've built that entire environment right. around your corporeal form. Totally. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to say that that's an example of the PC being superior. 
<laughs> as a platform, yeah. but it is an example of the PC and how it's superior as a platform. You can make your own judgments about that. Um, but even in the PC it world, it can be nice to break free from cords sometimes. A wireless mouse can be a great companion for a laptop, for example, because when you're not sure what kind of space that you'll be dealing with when you take your system somewhere on the go, a wire-free mouse maximizes your flexibility while still giving you more accuracy and control than a touchpad. Totally. Um, so as part of Newegg now, we mm -hmm. have special deals on a couple of popular wireless mice uh, from Logitech. Mm -hmm. uh, these are all-purpose mice, not designed with gaming in mind, but you know, and, unless you're playing a Twitch, you know, like a really twitchy game, a first-person shooter, a MOBA, something like that, they should also get the job done for some gaming. Yeah, a little so light gaming. Uh, make sure that you visit newegg.com slash newegg now, and you can get the M705, which is a contoured right-handed wireless mouse for just $19.99. You can also get the M557, which is a minimalistic mouse that will mm -hmm. work with either hand for $22.49. Minimal. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Logitech as a company has really been leading the way in wireless peripherals for a while mm -hmm. now, for a while now. So we've seen it for many years. Um, the office focused mice and mm -hmm. keyboards, uh, but more recently they've been bringing this technology to gaming as well. So products like the G900 promise gaming uh, performance in a mouse, latency on par with wire, wired options. And that's important because Logitech is fighting against that perception that wireless peripherals are never quite as fast or as reliable as wired ones. I love seeing what companies are doing right yeah. now to minimize that difference between wired and wireless tech. Um, other companies like Corsair and Razer have also been pushing yeah. the performance of their wireless gear. And it does seem like it's catching on with gamers slowly but surely. Uh, because if you can have the same response time as a wired mouse and you can totally free yourself from a wire dragging around your table, <laughs> that's really the best of both worlds. And, and one of the things that's, being, uh, that's really being worked on, charging, mm -hmm. is a major consideration with wireless yes. devices. And that's been really interesting because mm -hmm. we're seeing those same companies, Logitech, Corsair, and a, and a handful of others, making mouse pads that oh. double as charging mats. Yes. So hypothetically, you could use a wireless mouse for weeks and never have to actually plug it in and not, you know, even better than that, it's just, that yeah. that to me seems like the no-brainer step we should be taking. It's is real the, nice. the mouse pad's right there, not like the old Apple mouse where you had to like plug a cable into the bottom and then you couldn't even use it yeah. while it was charging. It just works. No, it's it's getting better. I mean, people who are actively using these things are helping to design. Influence, exactly. Right. Totally. Um, aside from the Logitech mice deals that we already mentioned, there's also a cool keyboard and mouse combo set from Logitech, the MK520, and you can get that set for just $34.99 with the promo code on the page. So I'm gonna see if I can find it. Uh, okay. Logitech MK520, 2.4 gigahertz wireless mouse. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up because we don't actually have one on the desk yeah. right at present, um, but <laughs> I wonder if it's gonna start playing our show again now. Okay. Oh, it probably will. Um, but yeah, really clean, sharp looking uh, wireless combo. Yeah, looks really good. Um, there's also a new egg now deal on the super stylish Arc to 7 wireless gaming headset from Steel Series. Oh yeah, I want to show this one. This one yeah. actually looks really cool. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my buddy Enabong, uh, he uh, hosts Board at Work. Yeah. And he's I know Enabong. Yeah, he's got like the wall of headphones behind him. Mm -hmm. um, he, he's totally an audio junkie on stuff like that, and uh, he's a big fan of Steel Series. So let me pull this up here. Yeah, that's just a really pretty looking headset. I like that a lot. It is. It's really nice. Stop um, Stop playing us, though. I don't need the window of the window of the window of us playing. There so we. let's talk about the current deal that's on this Steel Series right that. now. Um, it's on the white version, though there are other colors, as you can see on the totally. page. But for that white version, it, it'll work with uh, PC, PS4, mobile mm -hmm. devices. You want to pair it with a phone. Features a retractable microphone. You get that boom mic, good mm -hmm. on-ear audio controls, and it yeah. uses a receiver with frequency hopping technology to deliver lag-free wireless audio. Very nice. And it also has a rechargeable battery that can deliver over 15 hours of continuous use. Nice. You can save $15 off the Arctis 7 as part of Newegg Now today and pick it up for just $129.99. All right, well, we have talked a lot about gaming today, and we talked about Xbox and PS4 controllers earlier in the show. Now it's finally for uh, time for us to do some testing. Testing. Yeah. For work. By playing City of Brass. We have now, to. if you've never heard of City of Brass by Uppercut Games, uh, I think we have a trailer that we can roll yeah, so you guys that. can get a little teaser.
So City of Brass is an indie game that just came out on May 4th for the PC, PS4, and Xbox One, and we'll be playing the PC version today. It's a first-person dungeon crawler from Uppercut Games, a studio that includes developers that previously worked on Bioshock and Bioshock 2. I'm going to start playing here if we can get this figured out. Uh, thank you guys for your patience as we are doing this live. And uh, JC will be able to tell you a little bit more about the game while okay. I'm playing it. So uh, it is a roguelike, so we'll see how far I can get. I was not familiar my with this permadeath. term. Oh, I, really? I did not know this term before before we got the notes for this this week's show. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, we're still getting some weird aspect ratio problems here, too. But I didn't know well, that let's that's see what. if it's okay for everyone at home. Yeah, is it, is it looking, if you guys are looking at my screen. Well, can we get the thumbs up from the ninjas? We'll we can, we, thumbs up from them, then we, that's perfect. We, we can play it this way. Yeah, toss okay. me a controller, and then you gonna can go. talk about the game. And, and I'm going to run through it and see how far I get before I die. And I'll just let that go right there. Uh oh, inverted controls, you monster. Yeah, <laughs> that's the only proper way to play is no. by inverting. So here. Disagree. Um, uh, here, options. I can see. Go ahead. You got it. You got, you got yep. the controls? So I'm, not, I'm not even sure I'll be able to get the, the audio working back again, unfortunately. So it's just going to be the dulcet tones of my voice on top of this game. So, um, oh, damn it. Sorry, start it, it again. Oh, <laughs> let's see if we can. Here, I'll, I'll try and also turn that up too. Okay. Okay. And we'll, we'll do this. this. This is always fun uh, playing the tech support. Okay, getting oh, started. Oh, I got, I got the audio working again. Audios were even better. See, we did it on purpose. Okay. And play. Yep. And start. Good. Okay. Okay. So, City Brass. <laughs> um, I was not familiar with this title. Uh, Thank you. They, they, uh, they sent us some notes on it so that we could check it out. You play a thief hunting treasure in an Arabian Nights themed world. And the graphics look a little bit like Sea of Thieves, but this is, this is completely single player. Um, and a very interesting challenge. Uh, again, I didn't know this term roguelike, a genre typically defined by procedural <gasps> generation and permadeath. Uh, good trap. challenge. And that's what we have here in City of Brass as uh, Trisha will try not to swear excessively. Oh, I'm so sorry. On, on I'm channel. so sorry. No, I see, I think it's funny. Unfortunately, we do have producers back we, with the yeah. New York Ninjas who are like <laughs> a, a little a little uh, toothy and grinny whenever we start playing yeah. games. So uh, this world is going to be a little different every single time you explore, and it's what keeps the experience fresh. And you'll be trying to get as far as possible through the game. Killing enemies, avoiding traps, picking up treasure to increase your score. And uh, we'll, see, we'll see how long each of us can stay alive here. I, 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 for someone who claims to not be a huge fan of first-person shooters, uh, Trisha actually manages to hold on surprisingly well. Um, from the times that we've been uh, we've been Not demoing this game, well. I, I you know, like again. I, I died on the first trap in the first twenty seconds. The first time I picked up this game. Yeah, we've so only been playing least. this game. We both started playing this game this morning, so uh, we are definitely noobs by definition. Um, but yeah, we're trying to collect some loot, and uh, I'd be so much better with a mouse. Um, but we're talking about <laughs> controllers here. Well, and, uh, and so it's you probably can see you got a sword and whip combo. You can stun guys and then come up and. And get hack your them. melee on. And um, hack them to death. Yeah, there's also genies you can make wishes at and kind of spend loot to alter your experience if you want. But really, the uh, point of the game is to get through the level. So you'll see that little arrow at the top that's going to tell us which direction it would be beneficial for me to go. Oh, that's a trap. Good eye. Good save. Do it. Do that thing. So, so I mean, I think probably one of the big problems you have is that you, you play with uninverted controls which is <laughs> which is factually oh, you're so funny it's objectively the wrong way to play any type of first person oh, perspective sir. game sir i'm not i mean it's science so i don't think you can anything. fight science it's hack that guy hack him hack him yeah. oh so those guys are tough those guys are tough because yeah, they, yes, and they, they are. line up behind each they other they take many shots to ah shite <laughs> I'm trying real hard. So, again, uh, also the, uh, the, uh, the, the setting for this game is, is kind of fun and is kind of novel, too. Uh, it's an Arabian-themed fantasy game. Uh, you know, like, what, how, how many different er, er, eras of this Let's type see. of location Let's do we have? You know, Let's like, see what um, happens if I wish. I wish. You're going to use some of your loot? No, I just wish. Oh, I, just I believe wish. wishing okay. is free. Again, I have not played this oh. game enough to really know. Oh. Um, you can spend your loot. I could have. Oh no! Sorry. 
RIP headphone users. Where? <laughs> oh, I feel like I'm playing Doom right now, and I'm like, my face is getting crunchy, but I don't know why. I'm dead. Okay, your turn. Okay, all right. Let me see. Let me see what I can do. Uh, oh, but, man. but yeah, so uh, like Prince of Persia. That I think that's the one Prince that comes Persia, immediately to mind. But when I think about roguelikes in general, um, I think about 2016's Darkest Dungeon. Oh, okay. Um, by Red Hook, I believe. Uh, if anyone's played Can't. Darkest Dungeon, oh, so yeah. so fun. We, we, Love the art style. We gotta Go fix ahead. this. We gotta make it right. Invert the look yeah. for yourself. It's, um, it, you know, it's it's the right way to do it. I, anyone who doesn't is is objectively sir, wrong. Sure, no, untrue. Um, I know a lot of the New Egg Ninjas. We're talking about Arabian fantasy themed games. Uh, Mirage Arcane Warfare is a more recent one. It's multiplayer only, and uh, there are not a lot of players, so that makes it hard. But yeah, if you have not played Darkest Dungeon, I highly recommend. Wow, this is way harder when the aspect ratio yep. is all messed up. Yeah, yeah, it is. As if as if this game needed to be more difficult. <laughs> You're right. That's all right. Juan actually, uh, before we went live, was able to defeat the first level and get all the way through it. So I have high hopes for you, sir. I don't. Um, wow, well, this hit is the, really if you hit hard. the uh, the fire, it explodes on everyone and kills everybody. Not when you're too close to it, though, or else no, you'll no. catch yourself on fire, and that's not great. You can do it. I believe Every, in you. No, everything's wrong. Right? This is really hard. I, there's a very uh, inherent need in me to never blame anything with the game. I'm like, if I die, it's my fault. It was not the controller. It was not the aspect ratio. It was not any lag. It is my job to deal with all of that. Well, because the game is, and is still so, function. The, what the, the, game, the game feel is so well done um, when your screen isn't warped. Right. I um, agree with you. The, the, the whip mechanic is so much fun. Uh, to play with. Although I, again, I am uh, pretty yeah. awful with the double analog when it comes to aiming. Oh, so yeah, yeah. keyboard and mouse for me would be my way to go with this game. Oh, see, and he he likes to sneak right up. Nope, too far off. Get him! Oh, Ooh, another guy. Now, if you whip them specifically in the head, you'll stun them like you just did there. It gives you a little bit of extra time ah, ah. to kind of deal with one. While the other is stunned. Whew. There you All go. Right. Get some oh. loot, sir. Dang it, trap. Oh yeah, get off that trap. Oh that's a that's a bomb. That's not a that's not loot. Okay. And I know there's oh, that guy's fast. Oh dang it. No. Down a half life, but I believe in you. That whip sound is so satisfying too. They do a nice no. job with that. I'm I'm way off. Okay, let me get that right there. Yep. And I'm trying to look around. But yeah, so already because this game is it is it in a demo? I mean, not a demo, a beta. No, it's, I it's don't believe right? so. But it's been out potentially. I think in what were they saying? Early access since September. Oh, okay. is that what you were saying? Yeah, early access since September. So people may have played it, but not a lot of people are talking about it, and it's really fun. It came out officially on the 4th, but early access in September. Yeah. Because uh, this is one that I could totally see myself grinding. Again, it, it's like those differences in... Um, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of story, story campaigns, but if I don't have a good story, then I like sort of this sort of challenge atmosphere... Uh, you can actually you can also pick up vases and throw them at them. Yeah, but I I'm, I was already bad enough at that when the screen was right. <laughs> hey, go with what you got. You're doing All great. All right. You still have two hearts. Oh, oh watch oh, that trap. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, let me see. And sometimes you go to get there. loot, and there's a trap in the actual chest, the treasure chest. Yeah. That's problem. Yeah, that again blew myself up the second time I went to play on that. Oh. Uh, oh, those are just the charge at you with my face, guys. No harm, so they're just going to headbutt you to death. Oh, and right, into, right a trap. into a trap. Oh! Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. And. <laughs> I love how. Ah, I'm dead. Okay. Um, I love how, right. how, how smart um, the bad guys interact with the environment, too. Yeah. Because, again, like watching that head chargey guy smash his face into a tree and then another one of them fall into a trap. Is uh is pretty great. So why don't, why don't why don't why don't you go another round? 
that, 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 that. Okay, can you do me a so favor we're... and tilt just a little bit this? Thank you. I'm right getting there. a little bit of glare. That's perfect. Thank and that's you. That's looking good. Okay. Yep. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna talk about um, just some of the other deals on newegg.com okay. slash newegg now. We're that's almost perfect. out of time for the show. Uh, our buddies from EVGA were on a few weeks ago showing off some of their best cases. A uh, big fan of their hardware there. And uh, we have one on sale right now. You can pick up the EVGA DG75 in Alpine White with a tempered glass side for $50 off. So that's pretty great. Uh, you can also pick up the EVGA Supernova 650 power supply for $30 off as well. Uh, so that's a nice branding match. Some good synergy there for your next PC build. And to go along with your slick new white case, check out the Team T-Force Nighthawk Ram. We've got 16 gigabytes for $18 off. Um, also, this one, uh, this one came in today pretty fresh too. Be quiet. Uh, that's not a command. That's a line of awesome CPU coolers. And we have two, uh, the, we have two Dark Rock Pro 4 coolers for $15 off. So make sure you check out the New Egg Now page for those. These are especially good for living room PCs because you want your media P PC to be nice and quiet as we even had experiences <laughs> running the laptop I, fans right what? by my we microphone. You know what, we were demoing it on purpose to show you why it's nice and needed to have so, a To show quiet you that that's system. what Be Quiet is known for. Yes. Because it's right there in the name. It's in the name of the product. Hilarious. It's great. Uh, so <laughs> if you're in the market for a monitor, we've got your back with a sweet pair of deeply discounted Samsung displays. You can pick up this uh, the Samsung 27-inch 2K, that's 2560 by 1440 resolution, FreeSync monitor. FreeSync, we talked about that a couple weeks ago uh, in just how your monitor can communicate with your GPU. And that's in white for $50 off. Or if you want to go bigger, on the display and bigger on the discount, you can get $90 off the 32 inch version and that's definitely a sweet deal. And there's there's a lot more on that Newegg Now page, a ton of other components, uh, speakers, some really cool stuff, seriously. Uh, so many deals today, you're bound to find something you just need to have. So, um, all the deals, you, do it, do it, do it. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna spend my loot, I'm gonna keep my loot and I'm oh, just gonna okay. try to get through. To... I wanted to see, this like, because I, I was too afraid to spend loot my first run that I actually finished the first level, so I was kind of curious what it did. But anyway, uh, all those deals, Every newegg.com uh, slash newegg now will be live. And that's the tagline for our show. Every genie has, Every different, genie has different Every stuff. Every genie has different stuff. True story. Okay. Oh, okay, let's see, let's see how long Trisha can last. Oh. Um, but yeah, those deals live through the end of the day today while supplies last. We're, uh, we're going to see... Uh, how, how long she can go with one and a half hearts. And again, I like uh, one and a half hearts. It's excuse like me. taking us back to Zelda. Sure, sure, excuse me. Oh no, guys everywhere, uh, no! Uh, Not very long, is the answer. It was, we put the pressure on. I know, I know, um, I like that game though. I want to continue I playing like this that game. game a lot. The graphics are very Sea of Thieves to me. Yeah, right. well and again, I like that art style, I like that art direction. Um, mm. And when the screens, Correct. All of the mechanics work so naturally. Because yeah. uh, we were talking about this too, where when it comes to first person uh, games, I think both of us lean more towards mouse and keyboard. Yes. You know, Wasp and mouse. Um, the feel on the controller actually helped though, especially like good. the whip mechanic, have, giving you that nice little pulse. I, I like Agreed. that. That's a nice touch just to kind of fill in uh, what they're doing. I'm going to close fun. this again though, because it's. It would be nice too to let them know that the aspect ratio is our fault. And Oh yeah! Again, none of oh. this comes down to the game. I mean, that's that's why you saw yeah, me plugging stuff in. Yeah, the aspect ratio issues on. that we have are all uh, due to our setup and trying really to do many many things here at the Newegg Studios. And it's it's not HDMI the game fees. itself. Yeah, um, the, ga the game the game runs phenomenally we well. We were we were grinding really. it all morning. So. Um, but I yeah, I mean, in case now. you didn't say it, and I'm sorry if you said it, and I'm repeating because I was playing. Um, but all the deals on the newegg.com slash newegnow page will be live through the end of the day or while supplies last, like always. And uh, we will be signing off and ending the show today. But the deals are still there, so you can get those right now through the end of the today or until supplies are done. That's, uh, yes, that's, that's what we do here. Yes. It was why you should join us every week. Yeah. So uh, we want to thank everyone who submitted photos and comments for us to feature on today's show. Again, joining that conversation, it's a lot of fun mm -hmm. for us to go through those. Um, again, thanks to the City of Brass team for hooking mm -hmm. us up with the code for their game. Because, uh, yeah, we're as soon as the show's over, we're going to go back to 
playing Lunch their break. game. Uh, and again, from Trisha and I, it's just every week the major thank you to all of the New Egg Ninjas. Yes, that, thank that you, keep the team. Show running, you keep guys are amazing. Good. And and again, you, you can see even when stuff doesn't go right, it's we've got an, an amazing team of people here to to help us. Uh, be at our best. Yes, to so. work through it as we're doing it live. So thank you doing guys. You're amazing. <laughs> um, guys, this has been New Egg Now, and now you know. Bam. Bye.